This time on the show, Raphael Mudge chats about Armitage, the GUI front end to Metasploit. Plus, nerdcore sensation Dulcore is making the lives of forensics investigators much, much more difficult. Awesome. His real name is David. His interests are sci-fi, internet, and gaming. All that and more this time on Hack 5. <laughs> this segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. This is Court, your weekly dose of Technolist. It's episode number 10. 10 10. 10 10 of season 10, which in binary is 10. It's 10 oh, 10 10. Oh, right. Because 0 is representing the 1, and the other 1 is representing it's a 2, and then the next 0 is representing a 4, and then the next 1 is representing an 8. So an 8 plus a 2 is a 10. Okay, I got it. Um, yeah. yeah. It's binary. Exciting episode today. Exciting episode. It's good to be back in the studio. I have yes. been. Crazy. Uh, yeah, you've been moving, moving. into your uh, new digs. Moving into the new digs. Uh, right. One of the reasons why, well, also because we went to DerbyCon, we got so much content. So we've got even more yeah. for you guys. Great stuff for this episode. Kind of needed that to also deal with the whole move thing. But now, now I'm, I'm moved in. Well, we'll show some footage of, of Kirby later oh, at the new place. How does she Good. like it? She has been meowing at oil tankers all <laughs> Wait, does she see them come she by? She sees the oil tankers. Oh, yeah, that's so really cute. cute. I lucked out. I got some. I was like, I like was like Craigslist.org slash SF Bay slash apartment. Craigslist. Enter and like, boom! It like had just posted like thirty seconds ago. Aww. And it was like, what? Waterside studio apartment for cheap? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. I know. Well, congratulations so, so on your new digs. You need you to have a barbecue so I can go over could. there and enjoy barbecue the water. Would be good. Yeah, we can invite all the Hack Five fans. Except for the fact that it's like 200 square feet. So maybe yeah, it doesn't like really. Three Hack 5 fans. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit small. I know. That's, that's okay. Just a bit. Speaking of fans, we got a gift. I love gifts from fans. I do too. We need a little bumper, an explosion. Gifts from fans. Achoo. All right. So these oh are my gosh. diskettes. Wicked. There's nothing on them, as far as I know. Uh, so, so you say. Yes. We're these are from. To... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to plug them in and find out. Oh my God. Wow, yeah. they're so pretty. Wait, this these came fantastic. out in 87, so... No, no, they actually originally were introduced in 1971 oh, okay. with a whopping 79.7 kilobytes of data could fit on them. Okay, I wasn't even born yet. Anyway, those are from Aaron, Aaron and Suki. Oh, it's like Suki, but it's the Asian version. Ooh, there you go. Of the True Blood character, Suki, Suki's name, Suki. That's why everyone turn, tunes into the anyway. show as well, because they're like so interested in True Blood. He says, my wife and I are moving and cleaning out the house. I figured I could send you some 8-inch floppy disks I had hanging around. They can store a whole 500 kilobytes. I also got a picture of my leak kitties, Keiko and Espresso. Uh, this must be in the one circa 1976 that could hold 500K. Later on, before the end of the life, they could actually get all the way up to 1.2 megabytes before... Wow. Before... The uh, five and a quarters came around. That's where I started. The five and a quarter double density. That was good stuff. Which one were were those the fat ones? Well, they were just like this, except they were five and a quarter inches. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. And then the three and a halfs, and then USB. Yep. I don't know. Quack. But uh, I think I started on the yeah, five too. Stuff. Pretty sure. I know how it is. Oh, dude, sent a picture of the kitties. Yes. Thank you Cake for the picture of the kitties. Meow. Yeah, I love hack five kitties. My brother just got kitties. Yeah. His kitties are named. One is Binks from the the the, the movie about Halloween. Mm -hmm. It was like some cartoon, childish movie. And then the other one, I think he named Chewbacca. Oh. Because I told him to. Well, look at Kirby, which is Kerberos. And if I had a second cat, which I can't now, limited space, but I would name it Five. Oh. As in Cat Five. E. Cat Five. What? That's so nerdy. And that that nerd just there was like, why not Cat Six? And I was like, come on, it's old school. It's five. By the way, okay, have you heard about the XBL, Xbox Live hacks that have been going on lately? The Which Microsoft still claims is not their fault? The ones that have been going on for months and months, and it's really yes. just some people like breaking into some accounts with weak passwords and yes. then using it to buy FIFA mm -hmm. uh, 11 and FIFA 12 like 
I don't know. They're getting like whatever it is. They're Transport. like stealing people's Microsoft points and yeah. stealing their credit card information that's tied to the XBL accounts. Well, isn't that beautiful? I mean, any system where you've got a credit card tied to the account. I mean, yeah. if somebody hacks my Amazon account, they could purchase stuff because I've got credit cards attached to that. Mine too. My XBL account has my credit card tied to it, and mm -hmm. it has been that like that since I've gotten my gold membership years ago. And so I called Xbox, mm -hmm. and I was like, Hey, I kind of want to you know take this off because I'm a little worried about my security and they were like they were like oh or rather than oh, saving the credit that. card so that every time you want to buy microsoft points you have to type in your right. I'd, i would rather just type it in every time so yeah. it's not saved anywhere and mm -hmm. you know i don't know what their encryption's like over there i don't know how they're saving it so well that but, was the whole thing with the sony fiasco because there's exactly. no transparency with so, these corporations on how they store their data so the guy tells me he he says, okay, well, we actually can't do that, but you can you can fix some uh, some family family security settings on your Xbox console to keep people from buying things on your console. Oh, so and I was like, so that they would have protect to use you a from code. a local attack. Exactly, I he was like, oh put, yeah, put, uh, he he said put a pin code on there, and I was yeah. like, that's not really fixing what I might as well say put hot glue in your USB port. Yeah. So <laughs> and then I go, no, you know. That's not really what I want. I want to delete my credit card, you know? I don't want to w have to worry about any hacks. And then he goes, oh, are you sure you're not talking about the PlayStation 3 hacks? And I was just <laughs> like, do you know what kind of show we've done yeah, for the past, like, six years? Well, no, I didn't, I mean, I didn't I use that card, but, but I was like, really? It's a shame it you can't I'm just put in all zeros, you know, and just, like, overwrite your card with some you bogus can't. ones. You can't. No, because it verifies it when you hit submit on, like, any website. Well, it sounds like... Put in you've, your credit you've got card two account? options. You can one wait for your credit card to expire. Like I know one of mine's expiring next Which month. Which mine expires in January, Which means so I'm I could have do a that. Whole bunch of auto bill pay stuff so that I need to redo. Uh, otherwise, you could just go to like any convenience store, at least here in the states, and pick up a Visa like a prepaid, prepaid a and prepaid then card? use yeah. that, and then you can like refill it online. And at least that way, <gasps> if it does get stolen, you've got like a balance of what twenty bucks in there. Yeah, that's true. I could do that. Yeah. That would be a lot better than tying it to my bank account, which, uh, uh, I don't know. That's I don't know. I scary. love the idea of those prepaid cards. When they first came out, like, my first thought was, dude, you know, like, use it until there's, like, $10 left on it, yes. then go to the bar, drink with all your mates, and leave <laughs> with it on the tap. That's, <laughs> that's, so that's horrible. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Bartenders need your money. Well, yeah. Yeah. Tip your waitress. They got to be able Sack to afford their bills and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Don't anyway, forget to tip. But, uh, but no, like, the idea of, yeah. like, uh, I don't know, just Was like opening up the whole credit that. system. We're like, oh, you know, I don't know. Anyway, cards. enough of our bantering away. Yes, we've got excellent stuff uh, this we week. Do. It is, uh, you know, we're going to be talking to Raphael Mudge about Armitage. Excellent GUI front end to Metasploit. Uh, he's done such a wicked job. It was really fascinating talking to him about going from like a programmer making like grammar software for WordPress to this. And he's a really cool guy. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So we will see you on the other side. Here at DerbyCon 2011 with the man by the name of C64 Music. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, that's me. I make all the beats in dual core. Yeah. I'm, responsible for, I'm responsible for all the awesome music. Yeah, And then, and then you got that, uh, that, that tall kid from the UK doing all the raps, right? Yeah, he has the, uh, he has the easy job. I got the hard job. Nice. No, you were here talking about uh, forensics? How does that work? Actually, anti-forensics, um, I, I think doing forensics professionally for a living would suck because there's so much overhead with documenting everything and all that stuff. But so. don't, don't you actually do that for a living? I mean, I know that you're a rapper, but you're also a hacker. No, I, I do uh, reverse engineering for a living. So okay. that's, that's like the cool, cool forensics. So reverse engineering, and now you're doing reverse forensics? Yeah. Um, so basically, it's like if you tried to come in my house and take my stuff uh, and do a forensics investigation on it, it'd be like a war crime in there. Okay, so is this like the whole idea, like the Hollywood movie, where like the FBI busts in and then the hacker's like, oh no, and he grabs like the EKG or whatever the hell those things are and like runs over to the servers and tries to like zap them or whatever? Yeah, well, you use the EKG first to get the heart rate of the yeah. server, but then uh, along with your Nagios monitoring, but the EMP. The e Sorry, the EMP, you're all like, clear? Yeah, Free. fry your circuitry out. Yeah, no, a lot of this um, is this stuff that I'm dropping in the talk is um, real basic stuff, uh, nothing hardcore, um, but it's like a l couple different approaches or aspects of a forensics investigation. Um, we're dealing with stuff like uh, trying to acquire memory to do memory forensics, so taking an offensive counter approach to that. Um, in this case, we're like overriding the USB drive that gets stuck in the system uh, with 
the bite. Oh, so you've got intact. So so the forensics guy shows up trying to image your desk, and he's like, oh, I'm just going to plug my USB drive in to image it. And then your system starts attacking the forensics investigator? Yes, that's uh, that's one of the things. Um, we've uh, I've got tools that, uh, just some basic tools I wrote that basically pollute your file system in your disk with like a lot of encrypted content. So when you go through and carve out uh, all the files, you get all these like encrypted drawers and encrypted 7-zips and encrypted GPG files. And there's no, like it obliterates the signal to noise ratio. There's no way to tell like what was actually solid encrypted material that was legit and what was just like crap material that was encrypted. Whoa, my mind is just blown for the simplicity of it all because I do rely on, you know, true encrypted, encrypted volumes for stuff that I want to keep. Uh, private and I never realized like oh dude of course some some bogus ones that's even that's almost as good as the whole uh, plausible deniability factor of TrueCrypt. Yeah, it's um I I think there's uh some other stuff about TrueCrypt. Um, some other folks I know that do forensics hardcore have some notes about TrueCrypt that that are interesting. But um, yeah, this is more like chaff, right? It's like background noise that you can't distinguish what the real signal is. So that's uh it's that's just another part of the approach and that's considered in the talk. So uh, those tools, is that something open source? Do you publish this? Yes, um, they're going to be published on GitHub, um, github.com slash int80, but it'll be spelled by my handle way, like int0x80. Um, but yeah, they'll be open source, and uh, I write C and x86 at work every day, so I thought it would be fun in the sense of trolling still to write all these in Bash. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Just for the fun of it? Yeah, just for the LOLs. Hello. All right, 80. It's, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Where can everybody find your music? Uh, dualcoremusic.com. If you Google Dualcore, you'll find us. And we're Dualcore Music on all the social networks. Dualcore Music on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Dualcore Music, YouTube.com slash Dualcore Music, and on the Hack Shop. Now on the Hack Shop, available today. Being in IT and not using the right tools to get the best results from your clients is like a surgeon not using the best, most reliable medical equipment. How can you expect your clients to work with you? And that's why I use GoToAssist Express by Citrix. It's the best remote support tool. GoToAssist Express is designed with speed and usability in mind and makes it easy to get in, diagnose, and resolve the problem fast. In fact, go to Assist Express users report an average of 40% increase in productivity. It's like getting seven days worth of work out of a five day work week. And with unlimited use, you can support all you want for one flat fee. I've used remote support tools for years and GoToAssist Express is the best. So fast, so reliable. Start using GoToAssist Express today and you'll see why it's the leader in remote support. Right now, Hack5 viewers can try it free for 30 days. Visit GoToAssist.com slash H-A-K-5. Again, that's GoToAssist.com slash Hack5 for 30 days free trial. Hey guys, I'm very excited about a new project that I've been working here on Hack5. Actually, it's the third generation of the Wi-Fi Pineapple. I wanted to give you a sneak peek, and if you want to see it, if you want to hack it, we've got a very special Crack the Code Challenge slated for this November the 6th. That's a Sunday. Go over to hack5.org slash challenge and register because we're only going to be able to take some of the first few registrants uh, because we have a very special challenge set up with some boxes with some virtual machines, some USB adapters to pass through to those, and a fun Wi-Fi challenge that I think you're all going to, to like. We'll have a recap in an episode uh, following, and I just wanted to kind of, you know, give a little tease about the version 3 coming out real soon, and uh, if you want to play with it early, if you want to maybe even win something pineapple related, I don't know. Uh, it's Crack the Code Challenge. It's crazy. You never know what's going to happen. It'll be a lot of fun. Head over to hack5.org slash challenge and get yourself signed up.